Dear friends, it is Christmas octave and the Mother Church celebrates today the Feast of the Holy Family. By this feast, the Church proposes the Holy Family as the model and pattern for all our families. Now how does the Holy Family become a model and pattern for all our families? Of course, in the Holy Family there is the presence of Jesus, the Son of God. There is the presence of Mary, the Immaculate One. There is the presence of Joseph, the Just One. That makes the Holy Family probably admire them or even venerate the Holy Family. But I would like to emphasize today and propose another dimension of the Holy Family through which we can imitate the Holy Family. Because I think the Holy Family had many great challenges and they had to face it. And that becomes a model for each of us to imitate. Probably the misunderstandings the difficulties that they had, poverty, as refugees going to Egypt, sickness, death. The Holy Family had to face all these in their lives. And there we find a refuge and a possibility and a reason for each of our families to imitate the Holy Family. Though we could think of many virtues through which they could surmount these difficulties and problems in their life, I would like to just propose three which I believe were the most important. First of all, the great virtue that the Holy Family depicted in their life was that their life was centered on God. We read in the Proto-Evangelium of James that Mary was dedicated in the temple at the age of three. That she was a person who was fully centered on God. That I believe is the reason why she could submit herself fully when angel asked her the consent to become the mother of God. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. And it was the same reason why Saint Joseph also could submit himself to the will of God because I believe he also was a person whose life was centered on God. Both Mary and Joseph, they had their own projects, they had their own visions for a family. But when they submitted their will and their prospects for God's plan, that family became Holy Family. The second virtue that governed the Holy Family was a pondering and listening attitude. Psychologists would tell that probably one of the difficulties that is connected with the families today is the lack of listening. We tend to speak more than listen and very often we tend to make judgments without pondering sufficiently. The Holy Family is specifically known for their listening attitude and pondering attitude. Saint Joseph, we don't hear him talking at all in the Gospels. He is a person who listened, who listened to God, who listened to others. Mary is often depicted as a woman who pondered things in her heart. For example, when Jesus was lost in the temple and Mary and Joseph found him after three days sitting in the midst of the Jews and the leaders, 
the natural tendency of any parent would be to shout at the boy for not informing them about his absence all the more when the boy jesus retorted to that a question of mary most of us would have got infuriated with that but not mary not joseph mary pondered all these things in her heart the third virtue that characterized the holy family was giving priority to the other we find joseph not wanting to insult mary wanting to divorce her quietly joseph not wanting to publicly insult mary he considered her reputation as more important than his ego mary is supposed to have given priority to joseph her husband both joseph and mary went all the way to egypt as refugees for the sake of their son our families also dear friends will become holy families if we are able to give priority to the other in our life so dear friends as we celebrate the feast of the holy family may our lives and our families too become like that of joseph mary and jesus and may it become a holy family like that of nazareth by depicting the virtues that reigned the holy family amen